Yeah, Russian hacking underworld sounds like some upcoming James Bond caper. Our next story is about an actual movie about the Nobel Prize winning Soviet physicist Lev Landau. The film is called Dow, and there isn't a film yet about the making of Dow, but there ought to be. Dow was filmed over five years in a specially built two-scale replica of a 1950s Soviet scientific institute. The director even flew in real-life physicists to Ukraine for a week to play scientists in the movie. Among them was Alexander Vilenkin, the father of the world's friend and writer Alina Simone. In July of 2011, my dad called to tell me he was returning to Kharkov, Ukraine, the city my family left as political refugees almost 40 years ago. And he was leaving in two days. That wasn't even the weird part. He was going back in time to a country that no longer exists to play a role in what might just be the grandest experiment in film history. As my dad explains. The scale of this whole project is totally mind-boggling. Like, they closed the main street of Kharkov for two days. Or they closed the airport and they changed the signs from Ukrainian to Russian. They were shooting a scene where hungry people ate some rotten cabbage, so they brought 70 ton of cabbage and they sprayed it with cement to make it look rotten. His friend and fellow physicist Igor Klebanov also grew up in Kharkov. And like my dad, this was his first time back. The set of Dow turned out to be less than a mile from his old home. It was kind of touching. I mean, just the fact that I knew the area and I could see our neighborhood from the, the windows of the studio. In some strange sense, I was the local there, and they weren't, because almost all the people at the studio were from Moscow or St. Petersburg. So there was this peculiar element of that. Then there was the going back in time element. You couldn't get into the territory where they were filming with any object made after 1956, because 1956 was the year they were filming, so everything had to go. So I was given underwear, I was given a briefcase. Except for the three lead roles, everyone who participated in the filming of Dow played their own doppelganger. Physicists played physicists, communist party bosses played communist party bosses, and former KGB agents played, you guessed it. This was like uh, nothing else that I saw before. Inside there was like a yard, and some KGB person would walk around the perimeter. And the music... There was always music, and it was kind of threatening music, which kind of suggested some approaching catastrophe. Obviously, all that was kind of intended to press on your psyche. It probably presses on your psyche even more if you'd once been blacklisted by the KGB as my dad had and spent years as a persona non grata in his own hometown. Igor, on the other hand, left Kharkov as a teenager. For him, this was a walk on the dark side of communism he never knew. And then when I went in, they took me to Pierre Deal, basically the KGB, and they had me write out these long statements in Russian using ink pen. And that was quite an experience, having this guy who is like the KGB guy basically stare at you and dictate to you, and then you're supposed to repeat it and write it all out. Yeah, I had uh, to do and, that too, and I remember that, you know, <laughs> I, the, the meaning was that I will not really tell any secrets under no circumstances. That, that. That's right, that's right. Maybe they'll be after us soon. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing, I didn't perceive it as a particularly Soviet I mean, it was an allegory of Soviet life, but my immediate impression was that the Soviet life was far more bleak than what they created at this institute. Sadly, it doesn't look like I'll ever get the chance to see my dad navigating this weird parallel universe. Dow has been scheduled to premiere at Cannes for the past three years in a row, but remains stuck in post-production. At least my dad brought home some souvenirs. I understand that was the custom when uh, a scientist visited the institute. When he left, he was given some presents, and uh, I left most of them, but I took a roll of toilet paper, which was a very kind of um, nostalgic thing, which was a deficit in when I lived in Kharkov, very hard to get. But uh, 
I got that. It still decorates my house. Now you know what you get when your dad goes back in time, back to the USSR. A roll of toilet paper. There's got to be some symbolism there. For the world, this is Alina Simone. 